far out. The two channel color organ circuit. Well, I had enough requests to make this video, so here it is. The two channel easy to make color organ circuit. Color organs, a product of the 70s. I don't think they went back into the 60s. I could be wrong. But judging by Radio Shack, who got on the bandwagon of anything that was popular, they would eventually release their version for sale. And in their 1973 catalog was the first color organ. But you have to remember, Radio Shack made their catalogs the previous year and they would come out in August of the previous year. So the 1973 catalog would have come out in August of 1972. So just a tidbit there if you're looking at the Radio Shack catalogs.com website to, you know, to research some old product you might have had. Just keep that in mind. You're actually looking at products from the previous year. Okay. Well, here is the groovy color organ, and what I'll do is demonstrate the circuit, and then I'll show you a schematic and some ways you can improve the circuit. This is a very basic circuit, and it does the job, but yeah, you can make it better if you want. Okay, what I'm doing is using an any 5532 op amp. I would recommend that because like all nice quality audio op amps, it has plenty of drive current. I think it's something like 25 milliamps of output current. And that allows you to direct drive these small LEDs. These are Cree Screen Master. They're actually used in Jumbotrons. And uh, I'm just using them here. They have a nice diffuse light and works good for this purpose kind of reminds me this color scheme red for bass green for the high frequencies I remember back in the 1970s I was over at a friend's house of my parents and sitting on the stereo it was one of those console stereos was a kind of a white ball and inside the ball was a red and green light I remember looking at it, being fascinated by it, like typical nerd I was, even as a kid. You know, I was, I don't know, I was probably like six or seven years old. I remember the lady going, oh, that's a, uh, I don't know if she called it a color organ or not, but now yeah, that, the light flashes to the frequency, or to the music, and she turned it on and showed me, and I thought, oh my god, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And it had two channels, one for bass, one for treble. So that's why I use this color scheme. Just a little side thought for you there. Okay. So uh, in front of the uh, amplifier is just a low pass and a high pass circuit and you know filter, and we'll look at that on the schematic. It is being driven by this little amplifier. You can use an LM386 or a, you know, I'm using a TDA7267. Doesn't matter. You need to have a fairly high voltage to drive it. I mean, relative to like a, um, a headphone player type device. It doesn't really have enough output voltage to drive this properly. So, so that's what I'm doing here. Okay. I will... Oh, hang on a second. Sorry about that. The noisy central air turned on. And if you're also in the United States, you know how hot it's been. So it's been sorely needed lately. But we're finally getting some rain. It's been a drought around here. But anyway, not to get off on a tangerine, uh, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about the filters, the low pass, high pass on the schematic. Right now I'm connecting to the function generator, and I'll turn that on. 
There will be some electrical noise in the speaker. There's a high impedance input. Now I'll turn this on. Headphone users, you have your warning. It might be loud. The speaker rattling a little bit. But that's the low frequency. You see it's lighting up there as I turn it up. Wrong dial. Ouch, that's loud. Well, you can see as I varied the frequency, it switched over from the base or red LED to the high frequency or the green LED. So you can see that it's working there. Okay, well, let's hook it up and play some music. Okay, calm the lights, power it up. Play some music. I'll have to break that up because, you know, the copyright police. probably about all I can show you there without getting into trouble but you can see it's pretty bright you know having good quality Cree LEDs even though those Chinese LEDs seem bright Crees are still better get more output for your money so yeah it's uh works pretty well okay let's take a look at the schematic and here is the schematic now, I'm not showing the amplifier schematic on the input. I've made plenty of videos with amplifiers and showed the schematic. If you use an LM386, you can you know, download the data sheet and get a schematic there. Okay, so we have the op amp IC NE5532. And it has two individual amplifiers inside. And the circuits... You know, for each one is very simple. The heart of the circuit is the filter. This one is a low pass. You see how the capacitor is connected from input to ground. The higher the frequency, the more this will conduct. So it lets low frequencies into the amplifier and shunts the high frequencies out. And in this circuit, we have a high pass filter. The lower the frequency, again, it, this doesn't conduct as well, but with a higher frequency, it conducts more and allows it go, to go into the amplifier, so you have a high-pass filter. Now this circuit, it's my own design, and I used single supply, a 9-volt battery, to keep it simple. So I did have to add a capacitor here so as not to disturb the input when it's connected to the ground it won't work properly so I had to decouple that with that capacitor there it's really not a part of the filter it does its value does affect it a little bit so you, you might have to mess around if you want to change it and my circuit I don't have a um, potentiometer on the input I'm just using the uh, volume control on the music player but I would recommend doing that and also you want to decouple your source from the amplifier or the color organ circuit here otherwise if there's DC it could affect the low pass because it flows right in there's no capacitor blocking it over here so it's just good practice to do that and out on the output is current limiting for the LEDs. 
Okay, so it's basic, it works. How can you improve upon this circuit? Well, you can get a chip that has four amplifiers. I think it's the NE5534 that has quad op amps on it. And you could add a middle frequency or a mid-range. You would add a band pass filter. You probably want to set these filters, the high pass higher and the low lower, since you're squeezing in a, a band pass mid-range filter there. So you'd have to adjust these values and then add the band pass circuit to the third amplifier. And you could use the fourth op amp on the chip as a preamp because it's better to go from a line level signal. The problem with using direct from an amplifier that's driving your speakers is you have to keep constantly adjusting the level controls because you know you may not want your stereo cranked up all the time. But if you take the signal from the line level and preamp it with one of those op amps, you know, it would be more or less stable. You can adjust the level once and uh, usually you would be fine. So that's how I'd improve this circuit. Another thing you could do if you want to drive power LEDs is you could add a transistor circuit on the output. I'm not going to draw a schematic for that. That'll be your challenge if you want to make this circuit better. So okay, that's pretty much it.